Ian, you brought this achingly pretty GTO, <laughs> which if I could climb into bed with it, I would tell us all about it. It is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, these are one of the most beautiful cars Ferrari ever made. It was the beginning of the supercar journey for Ferrari. Um, it was the first car that they had uh, Kevlar panels. The bonnet was the first Kevlar panel. It was the first car that they had the turbos on. I mean, this was the beginning of the F40, the F50, the Enzo journey. This was super quick, wasn't it? This is 400 brake horsepower, which in the early 80s is absolutely phenomenal. Epic. Be uh, bedroom wall poster stuff. It and is. You've got these magnificent flared arches The lines, too. I mean, they, they, they raced them as well. They, they lifted these to sort of 800 horsepower and, and did Group C racing with them. It's a phenomenal package. You just want to drive it, don't you? You do. And it's, even by today's standards, it's phenomenally quick. What's it like as an everyday sort of drive? Hard work? No, these are quite, whereas the F40s are quite savage to drive, yeah. these are much softer to drive. I mean, they're quick, it, it's no doubt about it, it's very fast, but it's a much softer delivery of the turbos than the, the subsequent F40. So it is an amazingly usable piece of kit. You, you could drive for hours in this car. In terms of maintenance, any specialist requirements above normal Ferrari services? No, I mean, this, this was evolved from the very successful V8 engine that they, they produced, the flat plane crank V8, which came out originally in the GT4, went through the GT4 range, through the 308 range, yep. had carburetors, two valve injection, four valve injection, and then they brought it with turbos, but it's fun fundamentally the same V8 block. There's a whole evolution, a bit like the way the old Ferrari twin cams evolved into the Lancia rally cars. That's right. So it's fundamentally the same engine. It's a phenomenal engine that then went on to do the, the F40. Awesome. So all that journey out of more or less the same block. Now this is a rare beastie because they're only, what, 270 so worldwide? How 272 they built of these. Yep. And then they did another one because Nicky Lauda was racing for Ferrari at the time. And the story <laughs> goes that he asked one, one. So he had one. Okay. So there's, there's 272, 273 of these built by the factory. Absolutely wonderful. Are they all still in existence or have a few... I killed. don't know. They did suffer. There was a couple that caught fire. Yep. Any, it's a bit like the F40s. There are a few that have caught fire over the years, obviously turbos and things. Absolutely. Um, when they first came out, there was a modification to the oil pressure switch and the turbo oil feed pipes. Right. But no, I should think most of them are probably still around today because of the pure iconic value of them. At the risk of sounding crass, let's say I, I won that 100 million quid last week. How much would you want off me for these one of these? These are going up in value almost as we speak. These are well into the th late threes, 400,000s now. It's, this is a blue chip as investment as they get at the moment. A lot of car for the money. Can we have a quick walk around it? Absolutely. I mean, if you wanted to buy one of these, there's probably only one or two for sale at any time on a global market today. And I imagine it's hard trying to find one with the correct provenance as well. Yes, I mean, everything we do at work, we, we work very closely with Ferrari Class E, so all the cars that we rebuild and restore at work, we, we go through the Class E process. So Class E is fundamental to a blue chip investment like this. Yes. The, the other thing that strikes me, it's just this 1980s design, the, but the best of the 1980s design. It's the way, it's almost as if the wind sculpted it. Oh, it is. I mean, I'm waxing lyrical, but I'm a fan, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you can just see the wind being pushed well, into these massive I mean, massive they did. They, moving on, I mean, this was a sort of, basically a 328 style chassis. Yes. But the 328 had the, the engine set in mid-engine, left to right. Yes. With the gearbox underneath. This is a slightly longer chassis. It's a north-south. With a north-south right. engine and gearbox. Um, so it's a little bit longer, and obviously they incorporated the arches and the air ducts and things. So it's stunningly beautiful. It's, it's no, iconic. That's the thing that strikes me. Whenever I've looked at one of these, my, my sort of, <laughs> I don't want anything else. <laughs> you just want to sit in it, you want to drive it. It's got this beautiful quad exhaust arrangement at the back. And for me, and Ferrari have got a departure with the current models, you've got four round lights. That yep. to me is iconic. It's, it's real Ferrari stuff. They did. That's the, one of the, the most identified light setups that they used, again, through all the 308 series, 400s, uh, F40s, 288s. That defines the back end of a Ferrari. And of course, in, now everyone's in the 80s. copying it. That's right. I mean, Nissan copied it on the skyline. Loads of other people have taken that template. But for me, it's always at the back of my mind. It, yep. It's been symbolic of Ferrari. And of course, what sort of um, 
figures does that engine put out in terms of horsepower, these top speeds, etc. 400 horsepower, these cars. And in terms of torque? I don't know off the top of my head, you've got me on that one. Lots <laughs> and lots, I <laughs> lots, imagine, yes. dollops. It's the, a very usable torque curve. Is there a lot of turbo lag on the car? No, they're quite small turbos, so they spin up very quickly. So you don't get like the, the Porsche turbo, nothing, 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 whoosh. Yeah. They're very small turbos, so no, they are very responsive. Wheels are Chromadora, presumably. They are. Um, they, they're no longer available. That's one of the things you come up against on these, the split rims. Um, they're very hard to get parts for now. We have. Um, right, so you've got to find a car park like this if you're going to take the thing anywhere sensibly. No, there, there was a, uh, we look after about three of these. Um, and another client came in the other day, and he, he's got the last set of original factory wow. wheels on his car. Gosh, so he must have people lined up at his... Well, there yeah. must be someone following him around, waiting for him to crash it, yeah. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, no, you do have to get things made and keep it all authentic on these. Right, looking inside the engine bay, um, to the uninitiated, you've got these wonderful red intakes. Now, presumably these are intercoolers? Yeah, they're, they're the, the intercoolers designed to cool the air. Cooler air, you get a, a greater charge into the engine with the intercooler. So the cooler the air, the better the air, air charge. And the thing that sort of strikes me as a... As, as a layman particularly, it's just the standard of engineering inside this engine bay. It looks as if it's just been plucked off the racetrack and plonked into a road car. It is. This is this is all fit for purpose. I mean, it's all designed as a race car. The, the body is lightweight. All the panels on a, a 288 are all fibreglass. Yes. So you've got fibreglass roof, fibreglass wings, steel doors, fibreglass front. It, it's, it is a racing car. So all this is very functional. You've got the wastegate, you've got the intercoolers, the injection system, it's all there for a purpose. It strikes me as being very clean and very well arranged. In terms of servicing the engine, do you need to drop it out as you do on a lot of the modern ones? This is all chassis mounted, right. so the cam belts are all, all at the front. Mm -hmm. You can take the panel off behind the seats and get to the cam belts, but this has also got um, plates on the chassis. Right. You can drop the whole lot out in one go for major maintenance, which it is a clever piece of design, whereas That's the, the F40s you can't, it. you have to take them all out longhand. Yeah. So in a way, the sort of later cars were a step backwards, perhaps? Um, yes, the 355s went back to that situation where you drop the engine out to do the cam belts. Yeah. Um, the Testarossas did it for a while, then the, the later Testarossas went back to taking the engines out traditional ways. But yes, you do need to have a certain amount of <laughs> serviceability for these things. They do need fixing, and you've got to be able to get to all the right components. I'm trying really hard to be objective about this and not smile, but it's it's one of those cars that you just can't help but love. Can we take a look at the inside? Yeah, absolutely. Superb. Interior-wise, these again, it's a racing car. These are quite sparse. There was only two options on the on the 288. One option was air conditioning. Yes. The other option was uh, electric windows. So purely that they're concentrating on weight saving yep. as much as anything else. You didn't get radios. Yep. You could put one in if you wanted to, so that was it. It, it. This is a racing car. I mean, okay, there's a certain amount of ergonomics. You've got leather seats, yeah. no Wilton carpets, but it is fairly sparse. Well, thinking about that, I mean, you don't get the carpets in the new um, Scuderias at all. I mean, that's quite an acceptable interior, in my view. Yes, you've got velour dash, you've got the clocks and the gauges, you've got everything you need without going over the top. And you've got that wonderfully engaging H-gate and gear lever. Yeah, the famous Ferrari gear lever. Talking about the sort of clutch and the gear change and so on, how drivable is this compared to modern Ferraris? A, a super heavy clutch or...? No, they're not too bad actually. Um, if you look at the things like the 365 boxes and things like that, they are a bit heavy. Yep. This has got hydraulic clutch. Okay. So once they went into the 80s, early Dinos, boxes, 308s, GT4s, all had cable clutches, yep. all a little bit on the heavy side. Yeah. This was one of the first ones they put hydraulic clutch on, so again, it is surprisingly usable. Yeah. So it's quite ergonomic, you, know, you can drive it without super muscles in your legs. That's good, and it's a five-speed box? Yeah, five-speed, traditional, I mean, again, some people say these are a bit crunchy. They are a bit agricultural when they're cold, but once they warm up and you sort of know where they all are, they're fantastic. Lots of Italian cars of that era used to be, I used to have a Fiat Abarth, and they always told you, you miss second when it's cold, you wait yes. till it, it warms up. Steering, is that power, all manual? Yeah, all manual, yeah, no power steering at all, that would add weight. Ian, you seduced me with the fabulous <laughs> GTO. Let's talk all about Barkaways now for a bit, if we Barkaways may. has evolved, I say, I've, I've been doing these since 1986. I built my first V12 engine and did my first concourse with a 308. Ever since then, I've been working for other people. And recently, some customers have come to me and said, look, we're in, we'd rather come to you. 
So I've taken the ball by the horns and opened my own specialist facility. So we've now got Barkerways down in, in Tunbridge. And we've named it Barkerways for your Ferrari. We're here to help you enjoy your car. They are Italian, they are a bit quirky. Um, people do need a bit of help and assistance and we're here to help. Um, we do a lot of restoration work. We've won the Hurlingham Club, uh, Louis Vuitton, things like that, sort of three years on the trot. Um, I've been involved with cars that have won four or five different national concourse awards in all different classes at the Ferrari right. Owners Club. So you know, we're known for high class award winning restoration projects. Are you a one stop shop then? So you're going to take on mechanical, upholstery, electrics, whatever? Yeah, I've got all the key people I need. To do a restoration you need someone to do the engines, I do all the engines, gearboxes and mechanical, someone to do the paint and metal, someone to do the trim and wiring. So we've got it all in house, one stop shop and as well as doing the restorations on the older cars we also service the newer cars because a lot of the clients we find that are running Lusos, 250s, Dino's boxers are probably running a 550 or a 360 as a day car. Yeah the other car's going to be an indulgence but there's going to be a half sensible day car yeah. presumably. So we can look after those as well. In terms of the older cars I mean if you can't get hold of bits uh, are you able to get those fabricated? Have you got a whole wealth of... Specters? We do I mean we saw stuff all around the world we've got a lot of contacts globally for finding parts for these cars and yep. if you really can't find one then you have to go to the machine shops and start getting stuff made but anything's possible it's okay. the best country in the world for getting things made from guys in sheds everywhere well it can all be done yeah and let's face it, a lot of it started here at brooklyn's the yeah, original absolutely. guys the original sheds yeah when you look what these guys produced around here today it's phenomenal when they've got the chassis and the cars and the, the airplane shed then you can see how they've gone from the, the the car side, popped over to the aeroplane side, pinched an engine, stuck it in the car, and no, how it all evolved. This is yeah, where it all you're happens. carrying on the tradition a hundred and whatever years later, aren't yeah. you? That's got to be a good thing. It is. And we go to great lengths to keep these cars running. Keep them, no, we don't, no, we've, we've got a Dino we're just restoring. We've just got the first ever right hand drive motor show 246 Dino. Nice and what car. a history. It's the first one on the chassis list. It's the right hand drive. No, it was at the motor show. We're now restoring that car. I want that 100 million quid last week. That, yeah. <laughs> I want that car. Yes. Uh, is your client base just limited to the UK or are you sort of uh, spreading tentacles? No, we do. I had an American phone me up the other day. Um, it just depends who you meet. Um, so we'll, we'll look after anybody. Okay, that's superb. Well, hopefully we'll have a bit more involvement with Barkerways in the future. We'll uh, talk about a few more of your cars and we wish you every success Thank you very future. much. Come down and see us. Thanks, Ian. Thank you.